So let's bring in the Republican side, Arizona Congressman and member of the House Judiciary Committee, Andy Biggs. Congressman, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me, Kristen. So, Congressman, let's start. I want to give you a chance to respond to something that your Democratic colleague just said. He was saying that what's happening right now is an infringement on the Constitution by the President of the United States. I'm assuming you don't agree. Well, no. What he's talking about, I guess, is that Bill Barr would refuse to testify or provide documents. And, and there's, there's a legitimate oversight function that is constitutionally given to the legislative branch. But we're on a fishing expedition right now. In fact, they, they revealed in the hearing uh, just a, a week ago that this is all about finding evidence up so they could impeach the President of the United States. That no longer is an oversight function. If you want impeaching, you, you need to put your forth your resolution and then go and proceed in that way. And so it's a really different thing. And, and Representative Cleaver uh, is right in, in one sense, and that is that when Eric Holder was held in contempt, we're talking about a year and a half of uh, investigative work, an attempt to get information from Mr. Holder that he refused to give. That's a completely different thing from trying to get 1.4 million documents within less than two weeks. So it's a big issue here, but it's, not, it's certainly not uh, a constitutional crisis or an impingement on the Constitution. Well, Congressman, Democrats really want the special counsel himself to come on Capitol Hill and testify publicly. Do you want Bob Mueller to testify? Oh yeah, there are things I would like to ask Bob Mueller. Absolutely, I want to talk about the the instigation of the uh, the Mueller investigation, the Russia investigation, uh, how we got the the FISA abuse, uh, and and Mr. Mueller knows all that, but it wasn't revealed in his report. I'd like to talk to him about that, and then some other areas that were not will? in his report as well. Do you think he will uh, come testify? Because obviously there was talk that he would come on May 15th. That didn't happen. Now we're hearing possibly sometime in June. Do you think he will come? Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it. Okay. <laughs> That's a nice, concise <laughs> I, I answer. I wasn't, wasn't expecting such a short answer. I appreciate that. <laughs> Don't usually get that. Uh, let's talk about immigration. You know, the Trump administration is considering sending uh, some of these migrants at the border to yeah. other cities. Uh, I know you're pretty close to the border in Arizona, right. but I'm curious if you would be comfortable with some of these migrants being transported to your district. Well, believe it or not, they're already being uh, transported to uh, the Phoenix metro area, uh, thousands of them. And I got a kick out of uh, Representative Cleaver saying, you know, we, we just need some time. We just need some time to get this stuff together before we can uh, do this in, in our city, in, in Kansas City. But think about this. What you've got going on is we are overrun in, the, in Arizona as a border state. Yuma can't handle it. Otero County, New Mexico can't handle it. And we don't get that breather to get ready for it. We are seeing hundreds released into uh, our state every day and literally 4,000 people crossing the southern border every day. And so you would be okay with more of them coming into your district? I uh, just no, wanted heavens, to make sure no, that's clear. We, no, Kristen, we can't, we can't handle it. I mean, that's the point. And, and, and that's what ICE and Border Patrol are saying. Uh, the border states are being overrun and really don't even have facilities. Uh, they're trying to find more facilities in Maricopa County, but, but the churches, the NGOs, City of Phoenix has even told us they don't have any more resources. The City of Phoenix is a big city, the metro area is about 5 million people, and we're, we are overtaxed. And so we need to spread this out throughout the country, and we also need to take care of the border and, and secure that border. Really quick, I just want to ask you about the immigration plan that President Trump put forward earlier this week. I know you support it or large parts of it, but a lot of your Republican colleagues do not or have at least been very tempered in their uh, enthusiasm when they're talking about it. So I I'm curious, do you think there's room for movement here? Are people like you, President Trump, uh, could they convince some Republicans to, to get behind it? Yeah, I think I think there is. I uh, you know I th I don't know anybody who's not uh, for find, finding people and letting people in that are going to be the most uh, uh, helpful to this country. But especially because he keeps um, familial relations, those still there's a significant portion of people who can come in that way. I think there's some movement. I think there's some negotiation to be had. I view this as a first step. Uh, and I just don't, I just don't, my only issue is I don't want this discussion of legal immigration right. to distract from uh, illegal immigration problems. So maybe some, some movement with Republicans, as Speaker Pelosi says, it's dead on arrival. So Congressman Biggs, yeah, I gotta leave it there. Thank you. From Kansas City, Missouri, the home of Arthur Bryant's Barbecue, and also the home to Democratic Congressman, member of the House Homeland Security Committee, Emanuel Cleaver. Nice to see you, sir. Appreciate you being here on a Saturday.
Uh, all right, so we've got Buffalo, Detroit, South Florida on that list that you just heard from Jeff Paul. Would you be okay with adding Kansas City and Missouri to that list? Well, I think uh, most of the cities in the nation would like to be welcoming to immigrants, uh, provided that uh, we have the, the resources uh, to accommodate them. I'm not in support of, of uh, picking up Im immigrants at the border and then taking them to cities and letting them off buses. So I think we have to have a strategy, uh, and arguing is not a strategy. So I think we... But, but Congressman, uh, you, got, you got thousands of people coming across the border all the time. Strategy or not, you got to have some place to put them. Now, now they're talking about building tent cities down by the border. Isn't moving them to cities around America where you can spread the burden out a better idea? Well, I, as I said, I think Kansas City and, and many other city, uh, cities would be welcoming. I certainly would be, personally, okay. and would use whatever influence I had to, to create an, a welcoming environment. I'm just saying, all of a sudden, we would have uh, whatever number, thousands maybe, hundreds, and, and, and we want to be able to provide them with whatever they need to survive. Hmm. I'm not sure that without a strategy and without knowing, you know, uh, in a, uh, you know, sometime in advance for preparation, that we're going to be yeah. of any adva advantage to them. Well, you, make, you, you bring up a good point. The mayor of Yuma, Arizona, has been on this program before. He says he's overwhelmed, declared a state of emergency in his city because of how many migrants uh, have come in. I want to move you to what we started the show off with, with Garrett Tenney talking about Bill Barr, the attorney general, who said that this has sort of turned into a political circus. He says he's not really worried about being held to contempt. On your side of the aisle, there's talk of a constitutional crisis. I have, is the words and language here gotten overhyped to where we're at? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I, first of all, let me say I'm not a lawyer, uh, but uh, I, I can tell you that I, I think uh, there are people who probably are celebrating all the chaos. Of, uh, yeah. uh, Putin is probably one of them. <laughs> but I, I, but I, do, I do think that, uh, you know, when we start, uh, I'm not sure we're in a, con a constitutional crisis. I am sure that uh, there is a, an infringement right now on the Constitution. Uh, I, I think there is an impertinent response to the Constitution by the President. Hmm. And I think all of the people who are celebrating the fact that nobody is allowed to come and testify before Congress, they are right. essentially saying yeah. that no longer should Article One be a factor I, I, in our, well, in our I, lives well, Eric, every day. Eric Holder was held in contempt of Congress, and uh, the Republic still there. survived. I, you know, I was there. Yeah. The difference, of course, is and I, the difference, of course, uh, is that I don't ever remember in our, uh, in our history where uh, uh, individuals were just prohibited from uh, testifying before Congress. Uh, Congress I, I don't has, think Attorney General Barr has, uh, has been prohibited from testifying. In fact, he said he would testify. He just wouldn't testify and let staffers question him rather than members of Congress. That's a distinction probably on Barr's side of the equation from what Holder did, right? Well, yes. Uh, uh, my understanding is that uh, the, the Attorney General said he would not testify with staffers. But keep in mind, we, had, we just had a hearing uh, with a Supreme Court Justice, a Supreme Court Justice over on the Senate side, the Judiciary Committee, where a former staffer but, but or I, I, a I guess, I guess my question is, where, just to get back to the issue of the rhetoric here, we're in a constitutional crisis because the Attorney General says he won't testify in front of both staffers and committee members and ask the committee to pick one? That qualifies as a constitutional crisis? Well, I didn't use the term constitutional crisis, but I, I, we do have a, a serious problem uh, because it's not just the attorney general, it's the president's son, it's other members who've been president's uh, son's called testifying? in. Even, it, even former staffers hmm. uh, who the president is saying will, will not be allowed to, to testify. And so, wait, wait, wait. what we're essentially we're we're, we're okay. emasculating the Title One uh, creation of the founders, okay. which is the Congress. Right. We, we, Congressman, I, I I got I got the idea. I appreciate it. Um, and come back and talk to us. As you pointed out, uh, the issue on the uh, immigration, finding places for these folks, is not going away. Uh, when you start welcoming immigrants to Kansas City, let us know, and uh, we'd love to come talk to you about it. Well, unity is important, and I'm one of those yeah. people who believe that. Instead of tearing the nation apart, we've got to try to figure out ways to bring us together. I think uh, Joe Biden is going to be talking about just that in about an hour and a half here when he kicks off a rally in Philadelphia. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Sure. Good to be with you. Good to see you, sir.
Well, in a new op-ed, one former Clinton White House staffer says Congress needs to get over the Mueller report and pay attention to our nation's opioid epidemic. Ryan Hampton was once homeless and addicted to heroin. He is the author of American Fix, Inside the Opioid Addiction Crisis and How to End It. And he joins us now. Thanks so much for being here, Ryan. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about your story of addiction, particularly to heroin, and how that's impacted your passion about this particular issue? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you mentioned, you know, I once was a Clinton White House staffer. I had worked in community organizing, had this up and coming career uh, in political organizing, community organizing. Uh, and then as a result of a prescription and later being cut off on it, uh, I turned to heroin, ended up homeless on the streets of Los Angeles, uh, looking for help and having a nightmare of my own story, trying to find treatment, trying to find recovery. Um, and since getting into recovery in 2014, I just celebrated four years in recovery this past February. I've lost over two dozen friends, people I love about, people I love, people I care about, people in my community uh, to preventable drug overdoses. And that's fueled my passion um, to kind of put aside being a Democrat or Republican or party and work towards solutions uh, to the addiction crisis. It is ravaging our community. Uh, this is the worst public health crisis uh, we've seen in a generation, 200 Americans a day. Uh, a lot of people I know and care mm. about are being lost to these preventable overdoses. Yeah, we've got a statistic, uh, almost 50,000 deaths from opioid overdoses in 2017 alone. You mentioned close to 200 a day. This is a real problem. There's no doubt about that. But your, your FoxNews.com op-ed is excellent. And you, you go at the politics saying, this endless talk about Russia and the Mueller report, it's distracting us from our ability to actually address stuff like this. Look, I think, you know, anybody who knows me to see me on Fox News and, and to say <laughs> that uh, might, might take a step back. And look, I have my own personal opinions and feelings about the Mueller report. I think every single American does. Um, but the bottom line is where we are today, uh, it is paralyzing this country. Uh, it is paralyzing our opportunity and a lot of the good bipartisan will that was built mm. towards ending this epidemic. I didn't just wake up and say, hey, I'm going to write this and put this on Fox News. There's an important story I need to say. I've been working with members of Congress, chairmen uh, of committees in the Senate and in the House for now over two and a half years. We have worked together to craft some very progressive legislation that the president has signed. We have gotten funding to communities. We were really taking a step forward. Now, let me tell you this. In the last seven weeks, I have been trying to work with these same members of Congress on some new innovative approaches that communities are backing that would increase block funding for recovery support services. Look at things like hard harm reduction, um, uh, recovery tax credits. I can't get as much as a return phone call from these members of Congress, let alone, let alone their staff. Everyone is so caught up in the Mueller report, and I know how polarizing hmm. it is, but at the end of the day, and look, I'm not here to, to, to make a determination on what Congress should be doing, but what I am qualified to do as someone who is on the front lines of this crisis is say that there is a real human cost to these decisions. We have got to get outside the beltway and start getting back to Main Street USA, mm -hmm. to, to communities like my own, and focusing on issues that matter to me. Look, the, the outcome of what happens with Congress and the Mueller report is not going to make one difference for the mom or the dad who has to go identify their child's body today, right? And on mm -hmm. that toe tag, it doesn't ask you how you feel about the Mueller report or even if you're a Republican or a Democrat. And I think that Americans are going to take this issue yeah. to the electorate, yeah. to the ballot box in 2020. I know that I am. Look, I, I don't know if I'm going to support the president. I probably won't. I mean, that, that's, that's apparent. But I, I, I can't uh, in yeah. good conscience, say that this is good for our national dialogue. Yeah, and I mean, there's only so much political right capital now. out there and, and time to be had on the yeah. calendar. Ryan, thanks for it's sharing. It's turned into political theater. Yeah. Thank, thank you for sharing your personal point. story. I think that personal stories make all the difference. And hopefully Democrats are listening to you. We've heard from a lot of Democratic voters that feel that issues are, that are really important are being ignored at the expense of talking about Mueller and the Mueller report and things of that nature that are political talking points all the time. So we appreciate you coming Ryan, on Ryan, thank here. you very much for your time. Very much. Absolutely. Thank you. You got Thanks. it.